thanks for joining us on the tour. I'm your host, Michelle Cordens, the tree fruit specialist at Perennia. We're at Cap Farms right now, so let's go find Eric. Hi, my name's Eric. Uh, welcome to Cat Farms. Uh, we grow for Van Meekerens and we grow um, mostly Honeycrisp, some Ambrosia and Pizzazz. Okay, at this stop we're going to talk about crop load management. So the first question is, um, I know Eric you've been using some blossom thinning approaches, so uh, what was your experience using the pollen tube growth model? So we used the pollen tube growth model this year and we waited to start the clock until they had open blossoms in the top of the tree and I feel like that was too late. Like we should have started the clock once we had the right number of open kings even though at that point nothing was open in the top. Okay. Yeah, because they open pretty unevenly so... Yeah, they're, they're later in the top by a few days okay. and that made yeah. a difference when we were putting on the ATS I noticed that petals were falling off and I think that was a good indication that it wasn't doing anything, it was too late. Okay, so where we're standing right here, this is Ambrosia, um, what, what root stock is it on? These are on M26. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when was it planted? 2013. Okay. Um, so what other varieties do you use the, uh, the model on? We used it on Ambrosia and Pizzazz this year. A little bit of test work with Honeycrisp, but we didn't do anything with Honeycrisp as our plume was so patchy. Okay. And so how did you feel it kind of worked on the Ambrosia? You said it was a little late? It was a little late. It was a little late on the Pizzazz too. I really don't know if we had much of an effect at all. I mean, I know when we got to fruit lake counting in here, we had five and six apples per cluster. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so, uh, yeah. So when you're doing the pollen tube growth model, you have to take some measurements. So what kind of measurements are you taking? We just measured the styles on the pizzazz and found the average was nine millimeters and used the Honeycrisp numbers for the pizzazz and things. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but we'll find out next year when we start the clock earlier. Okay, good. Um, yeah, any other challenges with the pollen tube growth model? It, it's not that, it doesn't take that long. It's not, it does not nearly as time consuming as fruit lick counting is. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and we'll talk about fruit lick counting next then. So uh, for fruit lick counting, uh, you're using the fruit growth rate model, right? Yeah, in a limited way. We're not doing quite as many trees or clusters as are recommended. Uh, we've decided that we're only going to go as high as we can reach in the tree because getting a ladder and going up to the top is very time consuming. Um, and we printed, we spray painted some clothespins and printed numbers on them to make the clusters easy to find. Um, about how many per tree? Eight to ten okay. per tree and maybe five or six trees in a block. Okay. Yeah. About how long does that take you? It probably takes two to three hours to set up. Okay. But once they're set up and all the fruitlets are marked, the measuring is much quicker than that. It doesn't take very long to measure. Two people go through, one person shouts out the numbers, another person writes them down or types them into the computer, one or the other. Okay. And it goes pretty quick. Okay, good. Yeah. So why are you using these new tools for thinning decisions? Well, to give us more information so that we can act on our high density plant plantings in a more effective manner. Yeah. And so you're kind of relatively new to the industry. Do you find it, it gives you information like at such a difficult decision making time? Definitely, definitely. I've only been yeah. doing this for four or five years now. So, and our high density plantings are relatively new as well. We don't have we haven't had a lot of years of mature plantings to uh, get information to, to act on experience. Right. Yeah. And with like all these different re-entry times, um, with products getting a little longer, do you find that thinning is just becoming like even more critical? So more decision is, or more information is kind of better? More information is definitely important, yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, so what's, what's the time commitment trying these different tools? Well, it takes some time, but I think it's time well spent. Okay. That's what I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so would you recommend it to anyone else to try the pollen tube model or the fruit growth rate model? I, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to use both again. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, thank you. We'll move on to the next stop now. So why did you decide to try plant in place? Well, I think the big reason is to avoid transplant shock. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, so have you found that you, you get kind of better growth the first year? Um, more the second year, really. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more the second year, they just really take off. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, so did, you said that you did some budding and some grafting. So how have the two compared? Well, we like the grafting better. You, uh, you end up with a tree almost, it seems a year sooner that it gets to the top wire. Okay. And the budding, you, you did tea budding? Yeah, tea budding in that fall. Okay. And so it just seems like it's a little behind? Yeah, yeah, they're just a little, little, little guy starting out the next year, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. And so, would you do it again? Absolutely. We've done it in uh, the, all our new plantings are all plant in place. So, how many years have you been doing the plant in place? We've been planting in place since 2013. Okay. Yeah, yeah quite a while. Yeah. So uh, there's there is the risk that some of those trees won't succeed, but you you haven't had any issues with that. Yeah. yeah there's some, and this year actually, I decided to put some nursery trees, but I planted them in rows. So a few rows have trees every foot, with the intention that I'll move those trees into the row where they're needed. Okay. So if we look at these trees, these trees were bench grafted in 2017, planted in place. You're happy with the growth? Or up yeah, the they're getting up to the top. They have a few apples on them. They're coming along. Okay. So by comparison, these trees were tea budded, planted in 2016 and tea budded in the fall of 2016. So they're very similar to the ones that were bench grafted and planted in 17. So uh, could you tell us about this planting, Eric? So this block we planted this year, all bench grafted, plant in place, a uh, few different rootstocks, uh, 214s, 210s, and mostly 26s actually. Okay, and so what are some of the advantages of this uh, plant in place? Well, one of the things we like is that we can get our drip line, we have very sandy soil down here, so we can get our drip line irrigation going right away. I think it was here within a week and a half because we don't have to worry about the trellis nearly as much. So we were able to put the trellis installation sort of on a back burner and got a lot of hand thinning done. And we're ready now to get back into trellis, but as you can see, we, we're, not, we're not behind on the trellis. These trees are just barely ready to tie. Okay. And some of the disadvantages? Well, disadvantages, weeds are a big one. You're going to have to mechanically remove some weeds, whether by hand or if you can get a, get a hold of a finger weeder, that would be good too. So one of the other disadvantages, if you have trees that don't take, they, um, they'll be quite behind. So we're going to be ready to get a tree into that location as quickly as we can next spring. Great. Well, let's move on to the next stop now. At this stop here, we're going to talk about the M7 rootstock. So Eric, can you tell us about this planting? So this block was planted in 2018. Most of it is M7. Uh, there are some 202s, some 41s, and some 106s. All of it was bench grafted and planted in place. Okay, so that's the whole block. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this row here is the M7. So uh, why did you start to adopt the M7 rootstock? Well, we wanted a tree that would push to the top get to the top as quickly as we could and uh, hopefully bear fruit a little sooner. Okay, and so what do you think of the growth on M7? The growth is fantastic. They get to the top pretty quickly, but they seem, they get to the top and there's not always apples when you think there should be apples. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I know people who are considering going with a more vigorous rootstock. What are some of the challenges that you would uh, bring to their attention? Root suckers is a big one. They do sucker quite a lot. Um, there's a lot of pruning to do. Um, and they're very vegetative in their early years. We, we did some, some hedging cuts uh, a few years ago on some of these and we didn't wait long enough. They were still growing and all of the buds that looked like they were gonna put, turn into fruit buds for the following years turned into shoots. So how about biannual bearing? Are you seeing any issues? Yeah, we do have one block that was quite heavy last year and there is virtually no fruit in it this year at all. Two blocks actually. <laughs> okay. So I'd be careful on that and make sure you get your chemical thinning done early. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so let's go back to fruiting. Um, on these young trees, are you trying to fruit year three or is it looking like year four? I would love to have them fruit in year three, but it doesn't seem like they really want to do that. It looks like year four, hopefully they'll be loaded up then. Okay. So are you thinking of doing anything then to try to slow them down for year four? Well, there's all kinds of considerations. I mean, we've discussed uh, root pruning, um, maybe limiting their nitrogen 
maybe to none. I do have a block actually that has no irrigation and those trees not nearly as vigorous and quite a bit more fruit. So <laughs> I've actually turned off the irrigation in this block for this year. We'll see what happens. Okay. Let's just walk over to another planting over here. So in comparison, this block of four rows was planted in our nursery in 2016 and planted out here in 2018. They had no fruit last year in their third leaf, but seem to have a decent crop this year in their fourth leaf. Great. Well, thanks so much for bringing us on your farm, Eric. I really appreciate it. And I'll give you a round of applause here because uh, nobody else is able to do that, but I'll do it for them. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>